A lot of teams across the country, like we let off the show saying, they were saying, you know what, this is our year. We're not waiting for next year. We're not talking about a rebuild. We're not saying let's get the roster to a certain point. No, no, no. This is the year where you're expecting your team to compete for a conference title and a college football playoff berth. Got a couple of teams here that I want to unpack, but the first one has got to be Michigan. I mean, the Michigan Wolverines, the thing for them is that they got to beat the boss level, right? Because you've done everything else up until this point. A couple of years ago, you would have said, we beat Ohio State. Awesome. That's all we want in this world is to beat the Buckeyes. Well, now you're saying we beat the Buckeyes twice in a row. We've won the Big Ten Championship twice in a row. And now you're saying Big Ten title or bust. And you've earned that. It's like when you play the video game and you beat level one, level two, but then you get to the boss level. And you don't care about anything besides beating that boss. And the boss right now for Michigan is a national title. And everything is in Ann Arbor to get it done. The khakis came back, said thanks, no thanks to the NFL. J.J. McCarthy had no choice but to come back. So you got a starting quarterback for the second year in a row now. And then you're going to have Blake Corum back, Donovan Edwards, some key pieces on the outside. Like Michigan has everything there in-house to get it done. They're not looking for 2024 or 2025. And for Michigan, as the Big Ten starts to shift, they're going to add USC and UCLA. This is their chance, I think, to really just plant the maize and blue flag squarely into the ground like they did in Columbus. I don't know if it was a flag plant. They carried the flag to center field. I'll say that much. This is their chance to really stake their claim in the Big Ten and say, no, 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 no. Two years in a row we've won the Big Ten, but now nationally, this, this, is, this is our deal. We run this now. Michigan... Hail to the victors, that's all back. This is their chance to do it. Because if they don't get it done this year, then people are going to start to say, hmm, did they peak? Is that all they are? They make the college football playoff twice, and they're, they're you know a good story for two years, but then they kind of run their course. Or is it, no, 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 Michigan's here to stay. This is the chance for them to really do that. And I firmly believe that for Michigan. So for Michigan, this is the year, and a lot of folks in Ann Arbor wholeheartedly agree. Really quickly, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you've liked the video. Appreciate you in advance for that. I'm not going to ask for anything more. All right? Party rolls on. USC, another team that is saying, you know what? This is the year. Everyone in Los Angeles is saying this had better be the year. You know why? Because Caleb Williams is there for one more season. If you're familiar with this channel, you're familiar with the show, you're familiar with how I feel about USC, it's no secret. Caleb Williams has gone to the league after this year. I don't care how much eligibility he has. He's going to be the top pick taken in the draft. And so for USC, the task before them is, well, can you make sure that you don't waste the opportunity of having Caleb Williams on your roster as your starting quarterback? Because Caleb Williams, just if, if, if everything rode on Caleb Williams, if everything was placed on his shoulders, he is a good enough quarterback to win a national title for you. Now, the beautiful part about football is there is 10 other guys on that field and 11 other guys on your defense that have to do their job. And you notice Lincoln Riley went to the portal and got to work in there. I mean, they added some key pieces. Anthony Lucas from Texas A&M, Barry Alexander from Georgia on the defensive line because the defense last year, not up to par with what the offense is bringing. Allowed almost 30 points a game, allowed 160 rush yards a game. They were 103rd in the country in terms of allowed conversions on third down. They were 101st in the country in terms of yards allowed per game. So the defense is not holding up their end of the bargain. And the last thing you want to say as a USC fan is, man, that was awesome. We had Caleb Williams on our team for a little bit there. He won a Heisman Trophy. Heck, maybe he wins two Heisman Trophies. I don't know. It remains to be seen. But you don't want to say he did so many good things, and then they ask you about how your team did, and you say, yeah, well, the team wasn't really up to par with Caleb Williams. Don't tell that story. I know it's only year two for Lincoln Riley, but the portal exists, and he's gone to work in there and gone and gotten what he's wanted, like it's Publix, and he's shopping. Like, this is what USC has built towards, a year like this and a roster like this where they can compete for a national title because it ain't getting any easier. You're going to the Big Ten in 2024, and the college football playoff expands in 2024. So right now you got the quarterback. To be 100% honest with you, you got the, the path there within the Pac-12, it's no shade on the Pac-12. I think it just says a lot about what the Big Ten is right now. Like, this is your opportunity. This is the window for you. Make it happen. I understand you got great quarterbacks on your roster. I believe Malachi Nelson is going to be phenomenal. But Caleb Williams is a one-of-one. One. Do not waste him in Los Angeles. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. And USC, USC fans are right there next to me begging as well. Another team that we got to talk about, how about the Florida State Seminoles? 
They have been screaming very loudly. This is our year. We've built to this. Mike Norvell has just got some new money. They've built to this. Heck, we'll see if Florida State stays in the ACC. But regardless, same thing I was saying about USC, college football playoff is going to expand. And for Florida State, my question is, if not now, then when? And I think Florida State fans, it's probably floating around in your subconscious. You're kind of thinking the same thing. Jordan Travis is back. Jared Verse is back. We went and got Keon Coleman in the portal. Jaheim Bell in the portal. We have the number one returning production in all of college football from a team that won double-digit games a season ago. If it doesn't happen this year, are we really going to be teed up a whole lot better in the future when we're going to 12 teams and you got to win more games to get to a national title? Like, this is the chance here for Florida State. Now, week one is a college football playoff game in Orlando against LSU. A lot of y'all have been active on Twitter talking about it, and I love you for it. This is the year for Florida State. This is the year you have everything and everyone back, and they've all come back for a reason. Like Jordan Travis probably could have gone to the NFL, probably helps himself by coming back and improving his draft stock. Jared Verse, I firmly believe, could have been a top three round pick. He came back to Florida State to win more football games. Like, that's, that's the reality. You went and got these guys through the portal to help yourself have a chance to compete for the college football playoff in 2023. There is no, hmm, in 2024 we'll get there. Hmm, we'll wait till the college football playoff expands and then we'll have a chance. No, it's not what it's about. My good people in Tallahassee, you've suffered the last couple of years and you've been waiting and building for a year like this. You've played the long game. This is the year. The Death Star is fully operational. Florida State, this is the year. That's how they feel. Anything less than an ACC title and a college football playoff berth is unacceptable in Tallahassee. I don't think Mike Norvell would ever tell you that. But I promise you, internally, those have to be goals for them. And quite frankly, they've earned the right now for those to be goals for them. It's one thing to just sort of shoot for the stars and talk about making a college football playoff and playing for a national title when you're missing bowl games. It's a whole other conversation when you've got the number one returning production in the country and you won a whole lot of ball games the year before and you got your quarterback back. Like, that's a different conversation. So for Florida State, this is the year. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about here is a team that always has pressure on them by nature of the logo, by nature of the location. It's Texas Longhorns. Everything's bigger in Texas. I lived in the state of Texas for a period of time, and I will tell you this, they love their football. High school, peewee, college, professional, doesn't matter. They love their football. And a large portion of that state loves their Longhorns. And for Texas now, same thing I was saying with Florida State, they've built to this. For Steve Sarkeesian, it's year three. Quinn Ewers, second year in the saddle, going to be the starting quarterback. There's no more excuses for Texas. And Texas fans have had excuses as much as they've probably hated to say them. They've had excuses built in with, yeah, but the culture isn't where it needs to be. Quinn Ewers, yeah, super talented, but guys, he's supposed to be a freshman. He graduated high school early. Like, he's still figuring it out. Give him time. There's no more of that on the table for Texas. On top of that, look at the weapons you have on this offense. Xavier Worthy is that dude. But then you got Isaiah Nayor. You got A.D. Mitchell via the transfer portal. You're going to have a stable of running backs. C.J. Baxter, I think, the five-star freshman, is going to be a guy for you, along with Keelan Robinson. Like, you go down the line here, and for Texas, there's no more excuses. Everything is there to win. And the Big 12, I've said it before, it is 1 million percent wide open. I think Oklahoma is going to be really good. Kansas State, they bring a lot back. At least they bring their quarterback back with Will Howard. Like TCU, who knows what they're going to be under Sonny Dykes in his second year. But there's no like team you point at and say, yeah, you're going to have to really take the crown from them. There's no team like that right now in the Big 12. It's all very much so for the taking. And I've said it before, I don't think for Texas it needs to be a college football playoff year. I think they need to at least make the Big 12 title. But I also know this, I'm in the minority when it comes to Texas fans. Like, Texas fans do not feel the same way that I feel. They feel like it has to be a Big 12 title, and they feel like they have to make the college football playoff. And you know what? They've earned the right to believe that. They've earned the right now, in terms of the roster, that is, to believe that that's something that they can attain and they can shoot for in 2023. Here's the other kind of side quest that we got to talk about with Texas. Yeah, they'll play for the Big 12 this year. You know, that's going to be the goal for them is win a conference title and, and play for the Big 12 title and all that. But they go to the SEC next year. And this year is paramount 
for trajectory for Texas. Because think about it this way, and, I, and Texas fans, you hate when I say this. we got a lot of people that are new to this show, so i got to kind of lay this out there for y'all. If Texas were to win seven games, if Texas were to win eight games, you say, okay, that's great, but where is this thing going? That's awesome that you're, you, know, you won seven games. I'm all for that. We played for a bowl game. That's cool, but where is where's this thing going? If I'm a recruit, am I signing up for the trajectory of that Texas team? Because, listen, I love the Big 12. I've lived a large portion of my life in Big 12 country, but the SEC now, it's a different beast. I mean, Kirk Herbstreit, when he came on this very show, he was like, yeah, listen, I mean, they go play with the big boys in 2024 when he was talking about Oklahoma and Texas making that jump to the SEC. Like, the SEC, in terms of the competition, it's going to be brutal. It will. It will be more difficult week in and week out than the Big 12. Just a reality. So for Texas, if you're not going to achieve what you're capable of in the Big 12 this year, and it gets harder in 2024, and I'm a recruit, I may not have the confidence to sign up for that. Now, far be it for me to say Texas won't recruit well. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying for the trajectory, if you're going to go ahead and win the Big 12 and then go to the SEC after, let's say, winning the Big 12 and making a college football playoff, well, then that conversation changes. And you say, okay, yeah, I want to be a part of that. So this is a big year for the trajectory of the program and to pitch that to recruits in the future. So to give you a recap here for Michigan, for USC, for Florida State, for Texas, this is the year. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.